Welcome to the That's Good Sports podcast here on That's Good Broncos. Uh, that's confusing for the YouTube channel. I think I got to change the name of the channel to That's Good Podcast. Uh, I'm Brandon Perna here with Will Keys. What is up? Will says, "What is up?" Uh, we're doing a we do a football podcast. You know, it's we talk about the Broncos for half of the episode, and then we talk about the NFL for the second half. We've got a lot of shit we're gonna fling at you today. From Von Miller, TJ Watt debate, Marquette King in his revenge game, Broncos Raiders preview, uh, the fact that zero new head coaches got wins week one in the NFL. We'll talk just a tiny bit about this Thursday night game coming up tonight because most of you will listen to this Friday and everything we say will either look very smart or very stupid. Uh, we'll do a pick em for all the games, and uh, we have a new segment where Will and I are going to try and build the worst fantasy lineup for the week. The winner is the guy who scores the least amount of points. We've instated some rules, so you just don't start a bunch of guys who aren't playing, and that's, uh, that's what we're going to call the rundown for today. Also, here on That's Good Broncos, every Tuesday I'm going to be posting the Blitzed podcast. Um, it is a podcast that I thought was very good. They had me on as a guest. They get drunk. They talk about football every week. So you can check that out here on the channel as well. And this podcast is available, iTunes, Podbean. Make sure you go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating and leave a comment or whatever that bullshit is. And, uh, yeah, that is the intro of me saying all the things I think I'm required to say to let the listener know what the fuck we're going to talk about for the day. And, uh, oh yeah, every Monday, Will and I recap the Broncos game. So we did that for the first time this week. Also, a, a podcast is going to go up, uh, you know, on iTunes and Podbean and all those places as well. So that is our new schedule. Monday, uh, Broncos recap. Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll get the Blitz episode up. And every Thursday, Will and I do this bullshit. Mm -hmm. I really like the idea of the Blitz podcast because, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but like, I feel like I get drunk just about every week and start talking about football. It's just that there's, there's no one there to record me. But no one, no one to listen, right? Yeah, the fact that there's like microphones around, it could either like, I don't know, I feel like it could either be a disaster or very entertaining. But um, yeah, no, they do a good job. Like you or I getting drunk and talking about football, but. And you know, right. And I think. Idea. I think it's better because they, they're out of Canada, I believe. So. Oh, well, yeah, they're always drunk. <laughs> it's a little, a little too early for Will and I to get drunk. I'm still drinking my coffee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 10 a.m. where I am. We'd have to wait until at least noon. Right. I think. Uh, what the fuck happened this week? Oh, I dropped my, my Sunday night. Sunday Night Football parody music video. Yes. That, that was I was good. very proud of. And it's doing okay. You know, you make a video and you think people are going to share it. You think it's funny. And then it's just like, eh. Eh. Well, okay. Let me ask you this. Um, first of all, how much of the singing was actually you? And how much was uh, post-production magic? Well, that is my voice on there, Will. Yes. Did they do some auto tuning? No. Of course they did. Oh, uh, I'm shocked. But don't singing, hold on, hold on. Don't tell singing, me you didn't play the guitar as well. I didn't play. I have no musical talent. the The God band damn. I worked with is called Rocket Surgeons. Very talented band based out of Denver. Uh, they're on Spotify. You can listen to their music for free. They've got some really good new songs. They're gonna they're they're gonna put out. Uh, not only did I sing well, I did it in a in a Hank Williams Jr. Southern slash maybe mildly Hispanic accent. I don't you know. Should have, you should have done it uh, as Hank Williams Sr. and just started yodeling all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can yodel. You know, if I had that, that kind of talent, you know. Yeah, it'd be like uh, Mason Ramsey, the yodeling kid. You should have just oh, done the Sunday night game as him. See, that would have been, <laughs> that would a, be an idea for a new video. That would have been a good reference. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, those like videos like that take so much more work. It's like, Oh yeah. Make, make a song, record the song, come up with a music video idea, 
get everybody to show up to shoot the video, shoot it, edit it, edit it, upload it, and then just pray to the internet gods. You know, somebody posts it on the NFL Reddit or some shit, and it never, never quite happens the way I want. They're quite uh, authoritarians over at the NFL Reddit. They won't let you get anything up there. No, they fucking banned me. They banned me. We love you. You post one NFL video that you think they might like, and they say, fuck you, little, little, little bitch boy. Not only that, I got a bunch of Broncos Reddit users banned because I told them to just go post it for me, and they, a bunch of people did it at the same time, and the NFL Reddit just started banning all of them. So I felt very bad. Do they not want, like, NFL content on NFL Reddit, or – Guess is it not. just the fact that it's like 85% Patriots fans that clearly have it out for you? Probably yeah, for good reason. Must be. Um, must be the Patriots fans coming out in full force. To I, I can't think of anything that you have done to get on the bad side of any Patriots fans. No. I haven't uh, done a single goddamn thing, you know? Yeah. And even in my music video, we do say, fuck Tom Brady. So It's, I mean, did, it's in your contract at this did, point. Did we have to push to work it in? No, because it just came so naturally. And that's the great thing about the Blitzed podcast is they may hate Tom Brady even more than I do. Like they're they're basically their rule for watching football is you have to hate Tom Brady. Otherwise, get the fuck out, I think is their philosophy. So another reason I was happy. I like it. I like it. And you put up uh, an article on Patreon this week about why yes. everybody should hate the Raiders. So, uh, yeah, check that check out. Check that out. I, I got to post that on Facebook. Um, but uh, basically, I would try to like give some information about something happening cool in the world. But I have literally not left my house for like the last ten days. I, th- I've. This is the hardest I've ever worked. It's a video every goddamn day. I think Sunday. Okay, Sunday I uploaded or finished editing and uploaded the music video, took notes from the early football games, did a live stream for the first half of the Broncos game, and then got my post-game recap up for the Broncos that night and sent in a a two-and-a-half-minute video to Channel 7 because they put me on the fucking Sunday night sports show. Oh, what would they do? Or what would you do? Just my same bullshit without the swear words. Um, they think it's a good idea to put me on TV. And I said, sure, put my face up on that beautiful television screen. So that was a lot to do in one day. And I almost burned out, Will, but I didn't. Guess what? Frick you, Tom Brady. Yeah. Frick you to heck. Frick you to heck. Actually, that's, that's probably funnier to say than fuck you, Tom Brady. Frick you to heck, Tom Brady. Like I've been wanting to do that where I replace swear words with funnier, you know, like, things Mm -hmm. but it's just too easy to go to fuck you know i think yeah it's it's like i don't know it's instinct at this point i feel like so many people like because we get comments sometimes about like how we should stop swearing so like people can listen to the podcast with their kids in the car or something like that first things first fuck no that's not happening (laughs) no Uh, first things first fuck your kids yeah fuck your kids (laughs) i don't care about them I don't care. Yeah, I don't, I'm sure. I, they're as all soon not, as like I have my own, I'm gonna be like one of those people. Like, yeah. you know what? I was wrong. I should have been more considerate of the children. That's for future Brandon Perna to figure out, not current yeah. Brandon Perna. Actually, swearing is like the last thing I'll ever be worried about with my children. Like, it to me, it's such yeah it's such a, a a silly thing. And I get some like if you don't want that to be part of your vocabulary. Your vernacular, right. vernacular, if you will, if I'm even saying the word right, uh, vernacular, um, that's fine. Like, you don't have to swear. But I personally, I don't see a big deal in putting F and a U and a C and a K together to form a word. Like, it's, it's, it's just such a, a silly thing to have a rule against, but I'm glad there's a rule against it because it gives that word power that it would not have yeah. without, without that. I learned like in um, a communications class a while ago that when you swear, like it, you, you swear like to, um, 
like because a swear word gives you like this rush that like a normal word doesn't and that's why we do it ah so it's an addiction i have yeah because it like uh, i don't know like it it causes pain to subside a little bit Ooh, it's this weird like that makes prehistoric it makes sense like if you get hurt like if you get hurt and the first thing you say is ah shit or you know whatever Ah, interesting. It, it makes you, it literally like physically makes you feel better than saying like, ah, shoot. Ah, oh, sh- oh, shoot. shoot. My toe, yeah. I stubbed it on the GD. <laughs> yeah. The gosh darn lamp. floor lamp. Table again. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's an so- addiction. It gives you a little bit of an adrenaline rush. Uh, and since yeah. I don't have like a major drug addiction, <laughs> and uh, is- I, I think that, that helps. <laughs> but uh, why don't you? You just have a cold, that's all. Yeah, why don't you? I actually do need to blow my nose. Why, so why don't you get started on uh, the yeah, first Bronco thing? Okay. So while Brandon blow, blows his nose, uh, we got some news. And Vaughn Miller, who had an excellent week in week one, I thought three sacks, uh, including two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery, basically won the game for the Broncos. However, he did not win AFC Defensive Player of the Week. That went to TJ Watt, who had three sacks. Uh, I wrote in the loss to Cleveland, but it just feels like that. It was actually a tie. Yeah. Pittsburgh tied the Browns. Anyway, they gave it to TJ Watt. That's JJ Watt's little brother. Um, sounds like some bullshit. He also blocked the field goal at the end, so whatever. I still yeah. think it should have gone to Von Miller. What do you think? Yeah, here's the thing. Like, it's kind of been a topic all week. Is like Von Miller's, I don't think, getting enough credit for what he did in that game. Yeah. Uh, Khalil Mack's been like number one on people's like list of defensive home records for the week. Uh, I think the the biggest problem is people expect Von Miller to dominate games. Like after winning Super Bowl MVP as a defensive player, it's I think it's hard to get people to to notice you. And a guy like T.J. Watt uh, is young, and people are rooting for him to be dominant, like his brother Khalil Mack had all the news. Uh, leading up to his first game after being traded. So I think it's just there's just more attention on those guys. And I went and looked at the the TJ Watt stuff because I was going to maybe try to debate you if I thought, like, he did play better than Von Miller because I saw so much about him. Uh, but I think you're right. Like, his blocking a field goal at the end of the game is clutch. It is yeah. it is going to, you know, and it, it, it kept a, a tie. So it's not that impressive. But – I looked at all his sacks and some people said he had four I saw and others it was three and basically two of those sacks the reason I think some people wrote it up as four is two of those sacks uh, you can't even tell whether he really got a sack one he sort of pushed Tyrod Taylor out of bounds before he got back to the line of scrimmage and the other one uh, Tyrod Taylor was like already falling down after holding onto the ball for five seconds and Watt just came in and kind of like touched him or fell on him. So really only two legit sacks in that game I saw, uh, both good sacks, but, um, I would say after evaluating it, Von Miller had a more impressive yeah. game. And then the other, the other thing is Seahawks, their line is shit. So everybody knows that. True. And that's this is true. That's what I saw. Some, some people think that Von Miller should have had uh, four sacks too because uh, Russell Wilson dropped that one snap and then Von Miller was the guy who got him down after that. But I think that oh. they counted that as a tackle for loss. Uh, but I don't think you can get a better play than the play Von Miller had against Chris Carson where he just wrestled the ball out of his hands. Yeah, he just went in and know. stole it. I don't know anybody that <laughs> I don't know anybody that can do that. Uh, Khalil Mack did well, a pretty good job of it as well. I think well. a lot of NFL strong men can go in there and do that. I don't know. He just did it so, like, quickly, too. Like, it was like a sleight of hand trick almost. I think the only comparable play, really, and it, this play is actually more impressive, was uh, Bengals safety Clayton Fajidellum. Fajidellum? Fajidellum? Yeah, whatever the fuck. He, household name. Looking at his last name, I'm just like, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. But uh, towards the end of the game, he and uh, another Bengals player both went in and hit Jack Doyle. Yeah. Jack Doyle fumbles. So, like, Fajellum goes in, hits him, sees the ball comes loose, and it's like one motion, scoops it up right after the hit, and then takes it back, like, 70 yards for a touchdown. I mm-hmm. thought, 
that was a really impressive play and kind of like similar where it's just like a bang, bang, like, Oh shit. He, how did Miller come out of there with the football on top of like going in, you know, to help with the tackle, but either way, you're right. It was a very impressive. Yeah. Also, uh, I want to say Darren Lee for the jets had a really good game. He had that pick six. I think he had two picks overall of Stafford and he okay. looks like the real deal for the jets too. Their defense looked really good. I mean, yeah. it's hard to tell if their defense looked really good or Stafford just kind of sucks. Uh, uh, it was, I think, a little bit of both. Week yeah. one, it's, you get that mix. But did you see Aqib Tlaib's hot take about the Jets? No. What did he say? Oh, uh, he was on the NFL Network. And after that I game, saw him at the end there, yeah. with, uh, with how well their defense played, he's picking them to beat the Patriots uh, in the division, to finish ahead of the Patriots in the AFC. I love uh, it. He was, all, he was like, he was basically like, there's, uh, he's, he was saying there's real uh, playmakers on that defense. He's like, there's ball hawks out there. There's ball, ball hawks out there in New York. Watch out, New England. I'm picking them to, to win the AFC East. And I was like, hey, oh. he might, he might have a point. Like, Leonard Williams is really good. This player doesn't get talked about. Jamal Adams, he looks really good too. He got his first pick on Monday as well. Uh, it seemed like everybody on the Jets was pulling down interceptions left and right. Yeah. Even Morris Claiborne had a great pick uh, falling down for the Jets. Yeah, I like their defense, too. And, and same problem. we'll see. Th- their head coach is Todd Bowles, right? Correct. That, that was, he was a, a, a hot name. Was this his third season or with the Jets? Uh, this is his fourth. He started – his season. first year was that Fitzpatrick year when they were 10-6 and six in 2015. Right. And I think, like, I like that the Jets have stuck around with him – uh yeah. I think that's like a big issue for a lot of head coaches is they don't get a chance to really build and shape the team and you know they had two awful years but it is a lot of it because of their players and uh that second year with, with Fitzpatrick is when you know Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall started to look a little older even though Marshall looked pretty good with Seattle this week but uh I think giving him the chance and he's a, he was a defensive guy so I think there might be something there with, you know, Todd Bowles and finally getting like the talent that he wants on that defense. And uh, he's one of those coaches I hope to see do well, because I was hoping the Broncos would go after him at that same time. Uh, but that's when they, that's when they grabbed Kubiak. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And that obviously worked out for, for the, yeah, back, I can't but, complain. Uh, <laughs> I can't complain. Anyway, we're Pretty getting good. off track here. We've got, uh, yeah. The well, Marquette, we can back to the Broncos game. The Marquette Revenge game. That's right. As That's you have right. titled it here. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, the Broncos traded for Marquette King uh, this offseason. John Gruden didn't really like his style, I guess. I don't know if there's not to like about him as a punter, but he's – John Gruden strikes me as that guy who thinks that punters should be seen and not heard. And Marquette King is not your guy if that's your attitude towards the kicking game. Um, so anyway, someone in the media asked Marquette King about John Gruden, and he replied, I don't know who you're talking about. So the revenge <laughs> game is real. Uh, my question is, is, is Marquette King going to like hit like an 80-yard punt, or is that not enough? Is he going like 90 yards the whole length of the field? He's going to uh, boom some punts. I don't know. I don't know. He's gonna have a. I think he's gonna have a great game. He look. Yeah, I I do too. I thought he looked pretty good week one. He had three punts. Uh, he dropped inside the twenty. The Raiders punter only had one, and didn't look great. Um, I think they. I think the Raiders threw too many interceptions to give him a chance to stretch that leg out. You know. Yeah, and let's hope <laughs> they do well. They threw the same amount of interceptions as the Broncos. So three fair uh, touchdowns. Here's my question. Who, who has a, uh, a worse taste in their mouth in terms of Marquette King? John Gruden or Denver radio host DMAC? Oh, I don't know. I think they should start like their own support group for people that have been bullied by Marquette King. <laughs> and you say he's a guy who wants to be seen and heard. Uh, yes. John Gruden. I think Not John Gruden might have been right or wrong about him. Uh, he is a player who wants to be seen but not heard based on Maybe not so. wanting to do the, the radio interviews. So Yeah. Mark K. Know. King. Unless the, it's his music. He wants you to hear his music. He does. He does. And 
Yeah, John Gruden's come out multiple times saying punters and kickers should not have musical careers accompanying their kicking career. Uh, he said stick to kicking. He said that, you know, since he started coaching. Martin Gramatica tried to start a band. He said fuck off and released them. Poor it's, just been a, it's just a team policy. It's kind of weird, but that's it that's weird. his thing. So I, I'm all for Marquette King. He can do whatever as long as he's hitting big punts. He was kind of – the only reason, like, we didn't talk about him more is because Michael Dixon on the other side for Seattle had one fuck of a game just <laughs> – just absolutely crushing the ball every time uh, he got back there. Yeah, we. And I feel like we kind of see that when punters come to Denver anyway. Uh, I feel like teams always punt well against the Broncos. But he was uh, he was incredible. Yeah, and the, the, the Seahawks moved up to get him, right? Where, right. Wouldn't they take him the fifth or fourth fifth, round? Fifth round out of Texas. And what's his name? Something Dixon? Michael Dixon, he's from yeah. Australia. The the Broncos selected the wrong Dixon as a punter, is all Correct. we know. They yeah. should have waited two years for this Dixon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spelled but, differently, but, you know. Whatever. Big dick, big dick punter still. Exactly. D-I-C-K. So we have now completed the longest punting segment in all of football podcasts. I guarantee it this week. I would say so. Rich Uh, Eisen would have a (laughs) solid, solid erection for what we just did. Mm, He would never admit that publicly, but you know he likes us talking about these punters. Yeah, he'd tuck it into his waistband. Anyway, let's get get on to more uh, non-kicking news. Raiders brought back – yeah. Every guy understands that, which only men listen to this, so it's it's a safe joke, Will. Yeah, unless – hey, if you're a female and you listen to this podcast – um, leave a comment. Leave a comment and and let us know. Let us know your thoughts on waistband erections. Yeah. <laughs> do you notice? Do you not notice? We'll find out. We'll, we'll answer the age old question anyway. The Raiders brought back brought back Mark Davis Bryant. Uh, I think John Gruden watched the film for Monday night and was like, "Holy shit! We can't throw the ball to anybody other than Jared Cook. We need anybody who we can get." Uh, bring back Martavis Bryant. I don't care if he smokes weed. I don't care if he smokes crack. Just get him on the field and <laughs> get him in the lineup, catch some passes. Yeah, in fact, if he does smoke crack, it might make him better. Uh, he might. also – did we talk about this Monday that he called him the White Tiger like 20 times? I don't think so. Okay. I did the – sorry, I did the Mile High Report podcast this week as a guest, and uh-huh. uh, everything is bleeding together for me. So, in his uh, press conference – John Gruden called Martavis Bryant uh, the White Tiger like 10 times. So I, I don't know what that means, but. No, but it's a very John Gruden thing to say. Uh, can the Broncos cover a White Tiger? I don't know. I think for some reason, I just feel like Martavis Bryant's going to have a good game for no reason other than like he needs to to keep his roster spot. Um, and yeah. he shouldn't, which makes me think he's going to. So we'll see how that affects the game. Um, the Raiders, Jordy Nelson looked in effect. Yeah, let's just talk about the Broncos Raiders preview. Yeah, um, let's do it. Because I'm, I'm knee deep in my prediction episode. Uh, some of the things I've noticed are the Broncos, I think, on paper are better than the Raiders will. You know what? That's a take. But I'm going to agree with you. I think they're a better team. It's, Hand up, I'll say it. The Broncos are better than the Oakland Raiders. There you go. What's, what's your biggest concern for the Broncos? Uh, after watching the Broncos give up a billion yards to Will Disley last week and then seeing Jared Cook go for like, what was it, like 175 yards against the Rams? It, granted, like the Rams don't really have any good linebackers, so yeah, I kind of understand why that happened. But I do not feel good about Jared Cook. Right. Well, hopefully the the silver lining there is that the Broncos saw how effective Jared Cook was, and we'll have a game plan for him. Whereas think- Will Disley, nobody could have predicted that shit except the Seahawks, who knew he was going to be a secret weapon. If you ask Pete Carroll. I don't believe he thought that before the game. Lion sack of shit you are, Pete Carroll. He was just open on the first play. Um, (laughs) 
We got rid of Jimmy Graham. We have to throw to somebody. Right. Uh, I think the the biggest thing is the Broncos' pass rush, amazing against Seattle. I think they have a yep. much bigger challenge against the Raiders uh, this week. Raiders have a better offensive line. Um, they did a pretty good job against the Rams, although the Rams don't have the edge rushers like the Broncos do. But, you know, with Sue and Aaron Donald, like guys getting interior pressure there uh, – should be unstoppable, and I thought the Raiders did a decent job. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how – I think we'll get a, a good feel for how elite the Broncos' pass rush will be this year. Super elite, elite elite, or just regular elite. That's kind of what I'm going to see. Right. So, right, with the Raiders' offensive line, the reason that they were so good against – I mean, I don't want to say so good, but they were pretty solid against two of the best – defensive tackles in the league, Sue and Donald, is because their interior guards and centers, uh, they have Kalecchio Assembly, Rodney Hudson, and then Gabe Jackson at right guard, who are three of the best interior yeah. offensive linemen in the league. But if you get them on the outside, you've got Donald Penn at right tackle, so you're going to have Von Miller going against Donald Penn. I like that matchup for the Broncos. I basically like Von Miller versus anybody. And <laughs> right. The list, yeah. On the left side of the offense, uh, right side of the defense, you've got a matchup of rookies. You've got Bradley Chubb versus Colton Miller, who was selected uh, out of UCLA in the middle of the first round. Wasn't great. was okay against the Rams, even though, like you said, they don't really have any edge rushers. But I really like Bradley Chubb against Colton Miller. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. Rookie I on rookie? Him, like, yeah, I want to see him – really show up and get, like, a his first full sack. I know he got a half sack against the Seahawks. I don't want to just tear around the corner, uh, beat the rookie left tackle. That's a fun matchup to watch. Is, yeah. So, did they move Donald Penn to right tackle? Yeah. Okay. That's what you just said, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Penn's it right. Colton Sorry, Miller. I was looking something up. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think Donald Penn is a pretty good tackle. He's just getting kind of old. So, uh, Miller, Penn, interesting matchup, but I think you're right. Well, Bradley Chubb uh, against the rookie. Here's the other thing. Shaq Barrett only got four snaps yeah. in the first game. For, why? Why the fuck is Shaq Barrett only playing four snaps? Joe Woods or whoever ever the hell makes that fucking decision. Because in his four snaps, he had a run stop and a sack. You put Shaq Barrett in more than you put Shane Ray. He's more effective. He's more complete of a player. Uh, blows my mind, and I hope to God they play Shaq Barrett more. I think that is uh, something that needs to happen, especially against the Raiders, because, uh, I mean, I don't know. Bradley Chubb played, you know, more snaps than any defensive player. He played like 86 or 88% of the, the time, like, Give the dude a little more rest, and he might be more effective. Uh, especially, you don't want to you don't want to give him that many reps so early when one of the big issues college players have is hitting that wall early December because they're not used to playing a season as long as the NFL. So that would be my critique. Yeah, I would be fine with taking a portion of Chubb's snaps or even Shane Ray's snaps because he played more than Barrett too. Yeah, he played a lot more. Um, the Shaq. I will say that Shane Ray did a really good job with the rush plan that they had against Wilson because he – it's kind of like a run play where when you're pressuring Russell Wilson, like you have to maintain gap integrity. And the reason that Shane Ray – or the reason that Shaq Barrett got that sack of 22 yards and, and Von Miller got that uh, other big sack where Russell Wilson was trying to do that little pirouette thing that he always does is because Shane Ray – uh, was really like manning the interior and making sure he can step up and, and scramble for a big gain. Okay. So he did a good Very job. Very keen observation, much. if true, Will. If true. We'll if have to check true, I really like that analysis because I sure yes. fuck didn't notice it. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here. Uh, anyway. I just, I just like Shaq Barrett so much. I do too. Also, he's got a great nickname, Sack Barrett. It's easy. Yeah, is it because he has big balls or because he, he brings down the quarterback a lot? It's Probably both. Probably both, yep. It's Probably both. Probably both. It's a double entendre. So, okay, I think everybody thinks the Broncos should win this game. Yes. My 
final question before we move into NFL talking is who do you think is going to play better this week, Derek Carr or Case Keenum? Because both threw three interceptions. Uh, given Derek Carr threw two of his in the fourth quarter when it mattered the most, Keenum threw a zero in the fourth quarter. Keenum looked like a better overall quarterback week one. Derek Carr hasn't been good since Billy Musgrave was his offensive coordinator. Musgrave is now the Broncos offensive coordinator and maybe have the best game plan on how to keep Derek Carr in check. Um, I still think Carr's good. I just think he had a, a bad game. Um, I don't know. We're, we're, who's going to play better, and who are you? who's your final pick? I like Case Keenum to play better just because he's going to have more time to throw the ball, especially with so – I don't want to pile <laughs> on about Khalil Mack, but he doesn't play for the Raiders anymore. Um, well, John, yeah, Rutten, John Rutten, Mack, he'll, he'll, he'll figure it out. No longer a Raider, guys. Correct. And one um, girl listening who's going to answer our erection uh, a less, uh, waistband uh, question. Please. Yeah, no, we'll be waiting for that. But yeah, John Gruden's still figuring out why they couldn't get to the passer on Monday night. Um, Khalil Mack might be a part of the reason why. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but <sighs> could be why. Uh, they don't have him, so the Broncos offensive line played really, really well against Seattle. Yeah. Gave up that one sack, and then I was kind of on Keenum. At least that's what he said. Yeah. Uh, Garrett Bowles played really, really well. Didn't have a penalty, which was his major issue as a rookie. Good Belt job, here. Garrett. Good job, Garrett, with one R. Belt here was also really good. Um, they obviously uh, created some rushing gaps, too, some rushing lanes for, for Freeman at the end and Philip Lindsay for most of the game. So you, like, you got to like that. But, yeah. Keenum, I think he'll put an emphasis on taking care of the ball more than he did last week. I think he was just – he just was off a little bit with some communication, um, at least on that third interception. I think he got pretty – I think he got a little greedy on the first one. Second one was just kind of a nice play by McDougal. I think he'll do better. Derek Carr, I think, won't be as bad as he was against the Rams, but – He's in for a tough day whenever he plays the Broncos defense. So that's my pick, and I'm also taking the Broncos by a score of 23-16. to 16. Okay, interesting. Jared Valdir, of yep. course, zero pressures again, continuing his streak from the uh, preseason. Uh, uh, Garrett Bowles definitely spells his name incorrectly, right? There should yes. be, Most Garretts have two R's. Two R's, two T's. That's uh, – See, I just thought I was dumb. Like, every time I try to spell it, I spell it with two, and then somebody's like, it's only one R. I'm just like, fuck. How am I supposed to remember? The hardest thing about uh, writing or talking about the NFL is spelling players' names. Do you know how many times I've had to delete Garoppolo and then, like, oh, try it again? I can never spell his right. I'll never get that right. It's, uh, it's a few words. And – you know, there's so many player names that are just like their parents just made up the spelling however the fuck they yeah. wanted. Yeah, you shouldn't be um, you shouldn't be legally allowed to to spell Garrett with one R. Right, like it should be standard. Like um, you have to spell it this way, or you just can't name your son Garrett. It's a it's a, it takes a lot of effort to spell, and I'm not a I'm a poor speller anyway, so it just makes me feel shittier about uh, my intelligence. Yeah, way to go. And, uh, yeah, I also agree with you. I think Case Keenum will play better. My, my biggest thing is I want to see him come out of the game with zero picks. Zero interceptions yeah. should be his goal. Not one interception. You know what I mean? Zero. Because he did so well at that last year. Um, Derek Carr, uh, yeah, he's in, I think he's going to face a lot of pressure. I don't think he's going to throw three interceptions again. But I think he might get sacked more. And maybe there's like a fumble. I think it's going to be rough for the, the Raiders offense. I hope so. I hope we're not overestimating the Broncos and underestimating the Raiders, but I'm going to take the Broncos to win uh, 33 to 13. Oh, I like it. Isn't that, the, isn't that the Raiders score from last week? Is it? I think it is. I know they put up 13, but they, I'm Rams Yeah, have, it's going to be the exact same score. I have no original thoughts. <laughs> I like and, it. I like and, it. Hey, and, they did it once. Might as well 
see if it works again. Fuck it. Dude, I did um well tra- we're transitioning to NFL talk yes. now. Doo-doo-doo. Transition. Um so I was working I, I did the Bengals uh Ravens preview uh-huh. for yesterday and <laughs> I wrote the episode and literally in the episode, I gave two different final scores from the, those teams first week performances. And I never actually got the the final scores correct. Uh, and I had to edit it in post <laughs> and put in new audio sound bites. Because this I was is like, after, after the game was played. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I said the Ravens won 43 to three. It was 47 to three. Yeah. And I had the Bengals score wrong too. I was just like, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't know, man, you look at too many numbers, too many game scores and you don't double check your work. You're bound to fuck up like that. So yeah, well, this, this also, season is frying your brain. Actually, this this segment's called Corrections because – so it, last week in the podcast, we talked about uh, Philip Lindsay wearing Terrell Davis's number, right? Yeah. And you pointed out Mike Bell wore 30 as well uh-huh. after Terrell Davis. Correct. So in my Sunday recap, I said Philip Lindsay, first player, offensive player, since Terrell Davis to wear the number 30. Uh-oh. So we had talked about oh, it in the podcast – uh, again, I, I said at the beginning, I did five fucking videos that day or some shit. Uh, big mistake by me, but totally just f- completely forgot that we had a conversation about that very thing, and it did not stick in my brain. I hope I hope the comment section let you hear it. Oh, boy, Will, I did they? I hope they got on your ass. Hey, Perna, do your fact checking. Mike Bell and somebody said some other player that I don't fucking remember. Both were 30. You know what? Then why did the media make such a big goddamn fucking deal of Philip Lindsay wearing 30? Because he did the cool right. thing and called and asked for permission? Don't trick me like that. Because in my head, I'm like, oh, he must be the first player to do it if he called to get permission and everybody's making such a goddamn big fucking deal of it. Nope. He's the third goddamn player to do it since then. He just had the courtesy to call Terrell Davis, and he's good enough that Terrell Davis tweeted about it. So... I applaud Philip Lindsay, but I blame everybody else for tricking me. I am not wrong. I got duped. You've been duped. It, it, hey, it happens to all of us. I Just do. Be better. Just be I, better. I'll be better, but uh, my, my promise is to have one mistake in every episode, and it is your job to find it, people. Yep. You're right, the so, watchdog. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Okay, first thing. Rookie, not rookie, but – all the new head coaches lost week one. Correct. Do you have the yeah. names of all these coaches? I do. So the first one uh, that lost, John Gruden, saw that, talked about that. Matt Patricia got absolutely just oh man, crushed by the Jets at home on Monday night. Not a great start. Uh, Steve Wilkes, the Cardinals head coach, also took a beating uh, from the Redskins. Frank Reich – had his team in a pretty good place. Uh, it looked like they were going to win, but like you said, Jack Doyle fumbled at the end. They lost. Mike Vrabel lost in that seven-hour lightning-delayed game. Not going to put uh, that on Vrabel. That's just one of those weird no, that was a weird games. game. I don't know what you do as a head coach there. Yeah. Uh, Pat Shermer, not a rookie, but new head coach, lost. Played, played the Jags pretty yeah. tough. Had a chance at the end. Couldn't pull it off. Uh, and then Matt Nagy, speaking of having a chance, he blew a 20 nothing lead against the Packers. That was the Aaron Rodgers game on Sunday night. So that means all seven new head coaches lost in their debuts for their new teams. Right. So my question for you is which one of these guys is going to get fired first? <laughs> <laughs> who's on the hot seat now? Yeah. Uh, sorry, who's – Wilkes is the Cardinals head coach, right? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, fuck. You know, I think the the two coaches who had the worst performances have probably the most notoriety in Gruden and Patricia. Um, mm-hmm. and then a bunch of stuff about Matt Patricia came out saying right. the, the Lions – veterans and the team they weren't happy with their offseason he was too strict put in too many rules 
basically sounding kind of like the same thing Josh McDaniels did in Denver. Uh, well, who could have who thunk it? But I, I find it hard to believe that Matt Patricia would be as douchey and arrogant as Josh McDaniels. But I think uh, that's to be seen. I don't think Matt Patricia should be held responsible for Matthew Stafford looking fucking terrible throwing four picks. But uh, you, you expect your 10-year vet to know how to protect the ball. But again, week right. one, we saw a lot of veteran quarterbacks throw a lot of picks. So I'm going to give him a chance. Gruden's not going anywhere for 10 years. Uh, so I think, I don't know. <laughs> But I, either Patricia or Will mm, – Patricia or Vrabel. Because Vrabel, I don't know if he has a quarterback still with Mariota. Yeah. I will say I think, team too. I think the, the guys who most likely to get a, a win week two are Reich, Shermer, and Matt Nagy. Um, I think all of their teams played pretty well. They just had good – they played against, you know – good competition and you know Reich had Andrew Luck in his first game back in two two years and there's a, you know fluke play at the end there yeah so Shermer with the Giants I think the Giants are improved and have a, a better overall team they did play the Jags the Jags play the Patriots this week so that'll be interesting and the Bears looked the Bears looked good but Trubisky still put up Trubisky like numbers you know what I mean it was like a hundred and 50 yards passing like I think we he needs some time to work with him but I think that's going to be like what defines him as a, a head coach is what he actually gets out of Mitch Trubisky yeah and there's like a lot of window dressing on those first couple of drives where like they they moved the left tackle Charles Leno out to split out as wide receiver and it's like oh look at all this stuff and in the end they only they only ended up scoring 13 points right and when they needed uh, a score at the end of the game, which they needed basically the whole fourth quarter, they couldn't get it. So uh, a lot of, I don't know, bells and whistles from the Nagy offense didn't really do anything. Definitely didn't look as effective as the Chiefs offense did in week one against the Chargers. Um, but I think he's going to hang on to that job for a while. I think it's Matt Patricia. Just because you have uh, how terrible, just like how disastrous that start was, Plus the stuff that came out this week um, about Lions players not really liking him. That's a bad thing to come out, especially after a loss. It means guys are kind of, I don't know. It means like he's, I don't want to say it's like it's losing the locker room this early, but like it's just not a good sign. Yeah. It's not no, a good think, sign from a leadership perspective. I think you're right. I, I like him. I thought he had the best chance to be a decent head coach. Uh, he just Patriot ones. He Patriot. doesn't look like a head coach on the sideline. Like you see him, he's got he still got that pencil, and he's got the backwards hat, and he like waddles around the sideline like like the Danny DeVito penguin from Batman Returns. And to me, he looks like a head coach because of that. I don't know. Maybe I mean maybe that makes him the most head coach looking guy ever. I don't know. I just want someone. Yeah, hard to say. Let us know, I'm Matt. Taller as a head coach, like, Matt I want a Patricia, taller, most man. head coach looking head coach or least head coaching look looking. Yeah, head coach. like I like I I don't think Vance Joseph's necessarily a great head coach, but he looks like a head coach sitting on the standing on the sideline. He's like he's nice and tall. Uh, he's in good shape. He's got those aviators on. Belichick, he looks like he's not, he looks not like in he's good, good shape. Good. Andy Reid not in good shape. I'm, Mike Holstrom. Never in good shape. Like <laughs> he looks like it. you're, he looks you're like wanting it. everybody to be Sean McVay, but taller. You're saying, yeah. <laughs> That's hey, right. Hey, I'm not going to knock you for having uh, an appreciation for a. He's a beautiful man. Physique that looks nice. I'm not going to apologize for it. So <laughs> we're on the same page. Yeah. Uh, I anyway, think, yeah. Uh, I think Gruden's going to come out zero and two. Who do the Lions yeah. play? Well, we'll save that for our picks. Right now, let's right. jump into the Bengals Ravens. It's Thursday night football coming up tonight. Yeah. Uh, I picked the Ravens to win this game in my prediction episode. I think both of these teams are going to be pretty decent, though. I think Andy Dalton played better than I thought he would. 
because I like to rip on Andy Dalton because I really don't like him. Um, but I thought he was decent. I think the the Bengals have better skill position players. Uh, Joe Mixon, better running back. A.J. Green, far better receiver than really anybody on the Ravens. Tyler Eifert's not dead. He's, he's still on the roster. Did suffer, I guess, a minor back thing, but he's going to play. He was a full participant in practice. But I like the Ravens' defense better. I like uh, Joe Flacco more than Andy Dalton. And uh, I don't know. I, I think the Ravens are going to win the AFC North. So that's kind of what I went with talking about this game. Yeah. I mean, there's like uh, – there's kind of a thing to be said for – uh, teams playing at home on the short week and it's in Cincinnati but I I don't know I think the Ravens are going to play well coming off of how good that they looked in week one and I know it was the Bills but that's a, still like a, a big confidence booster to beat a team that badly yeah uh, in your first game of the year and I think they really want to beat the Bengals too after they knocked them out of the playoffs last year yeah it's that long game. Tyler Boyd touchdown it's game two of the revenge tour for the Ravens, right? So the yeah. Bills got in the playoffs instead of them, and they Correct. that happened because of the Bengals. <laughs> and uh, they fucked them up. Here's what I – like, I think – like I said, I thought Andy Dalton looked better, but the Ravens had 26 or 29 quarterback pressures week one. Uh, yeah, that offensive line in Buffalo the, trash. The Bengals gave up 14 or 15 to the Colts. Uh, and the Colts, yeah. like, nobody is saying the Colts have a, a strong defensive front seven. So no. I think Andy Dalton's going to be under a lot more pressure. It's going to be a lot more challenging for him. And I just like him to make some mistakes. It's probably going to be like one of those weird, quirky games, week two, division rivals. Uh, it's probably some weird shit we can't predict is going to happen. Uh, but I think the Rave – and. Better coaching for the Ravens. Yeah, no, I think you're right on. So we're both taking the Ravens. There we go. Uh, There's our Thursday which, night prediction. Yeah, so do a quick review of how we did last week in our picks. You, Brandon, went 8, 7, and 1. You got that tie uh, at the end, so we're just not counting that. But I went 10, 5, and 1. So wow. I'm ahead right now. I got Strong that Jets. week one. I picked um, – the difference is the main difference is I think where you picked the 49ers to beat the Vikings. That was stupid. I knew the Vikings were going to win. Yeah. Um, we both picked the Falcons, both very wrong. Yeah. I and, knew I should have switched that pick. Yeah, I got what the I, Jets pick right too. That, yeah, that's a that solid. kind of separated me. Yeah. No, uh, I commend that pick. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't feeling very good after the first play from scrimmage, but it worked out. <laughs> When I saw, like, all of Pro Football Focus pick the Eagles, I mean, the, the Falcons to win or something, yeah. I was like, shit, the Eagles are – they're going to win. They're yeah, it's so stupid because, like, the, the Super Bowl champion, like, almost always wins that opening game at home. Right. Like, there's just so much emotion, and, like, you get the banner, and you just can't let down the fans after that. They usually always get it down. It was they insane – how similar that game was to the last time those two teams played. Yeah. Low Red scoring end. game, chance for the Falcons to win at the end, and they can't freaking do it. So, yeah. All right. Start what's Sarkeesian, the hottest of seats? Yeah. You, uh, you won last week. You, I did. Hopefully, you'll keep a season total here for us. I'll try. Yeah. Please do. It's your Unless job. there's anybody in the comments that wants to do it for me, but probably not. You can fucking do it. <laughs> um, we're going to do week two picks right now. Correct. Uh, so the first game, uh, the, the morning games, a good slate of morning games. First one is the Carolina Panthers at the team we are just talking about, the Atlanta Falcons. Wow. Two teams I think are not necessarily like similar in style, but the fact that I think they're both pretty good, but they're not going to be good enough to really – make a playoff push. Carolina beat Dallas the same way Atlanta kind of lost to the Eagles. Low scoring, weird game. Uh, it's at – I'm going to take Atlanta just because it's in Atlanta, I think. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. Um, I don't think they're ever going to reach their peak offensively with Steve Sarkeesian, but I think it's going to balance out from week one just because there's 
I don't know, there's just so much talent and I think they'll find a way to get the ball in the end zone when they're in the red zone. So, yeah, give me the Falcons. Yeah, I don't feel better, great about it. but better, um, No, me neither, but I'll take, you know, Coleman and Freeman over McCaffrey and my my main man, CJ, and Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu over whoever catches passes for uh, the Panthers now. Because Greg and Greg Olson is out. Like he broke, he hurt his ankle again. He didn't. He didn't break it, but he's out. And they need him. The Panthers need Greg Olson. So yeah, Atlanta. Yep. Okay. So this one looks like it should be an easy pick, but you never know. Um, both teams are own one. It's the Los Angeles Chargers at the Buffalo Bills, led by first-time starter Josh Allen. Is Josh yeah. Allen tall? and have a strong arm and have big enough hands to pull this off? No, but he does have all those things. Yes, he does. It, it is in Buffalo. Uh, so Correct. we're going to get some sweet tailgating footage being shared on social media before the game, guys jumping through tables of fire. Maybe <laughs> this is the year some uh, a Buffalo Bills fan, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to fucking die at that stadium. Uh, and, he will, and he will get like a parking spot named after him. Yeah, it's going to be sad, and I'm very concerned about it. But the Chargers, I think Phillip Rivers was right. They fucked themselves against the Chiefs. The Chiefs played good football. Um, the Chargers will be without Joey Bosa still, but yep. I'm, I'm, picking, I'm picking L.A. Uh, they're a better team, and I think they're going to get it done this weekend. Yeah, part of me just like uh, – just because – everybody's so down on the Bills. And they're still like – I know they're not the same team, but they made the playoffs last year, and they're at home. It's their home okay. opener. Okay. I'm just – it's like everything – I don't know. It lines up towards like this is going to be like one of those games where everybody's off, like the Tampa Bay New Orleans game last week. But I'm still taking the Chargers <laughs> because I, I just can't – I can't see the Bills winning after how bad that they looked on offense. Yeah. And defense, really, last week. They just looked terrible. The, yeah. And LaShawn McCoy didn't even lead the team in carries, I don't think, which is weird. Yeah, it was very dumb. Like, they just got down early and clearly just dropped back and, and got sacked most of the time. But they really didn't have any sort of plan offensively. Uh, no, okay, no, he did lead. Overmatched. He had seven carries for 22 yards. Marcus That's Murphy terrible. had six for 31. Like, he's your offense, basically. I don't know why you're not yeah. giving him the ball, you know, at least 15 times because he catches passes. They throw to him a lot, but that seems dumb. If the Bills want to have any chance, they got to run the shit out of McCoy. Mm -hmm. okay. I agree. Minnesota, Minnesota, Green Bay, big game. Yes. <clears throat> this is a morning game? This is a morning game. This should be the Sunday night game again, but of course we get shitty Giants Dallas again. Basically, you could say Aaron Rodgers should be the Sunday night game every time. Not yeah. the Packers, not any team. No. Aaron Rodgers should be the Sunday night game. Yeah, whatever team he's playing for. It just so happens to be the Packers. Anyway, what's your pick? Fuck. I mean, he has a sprain. Rodgers has a sprained knee. He says he's going to play. But I'm a little worried about that. I wouldn't play. I wouldn't fucking play him if he does have a knee sprain. <sighs> I wouldn't either. Not against this defense. I think he, if he was healthy, I would lean towards the Packers. But Minnesota is just might be one of the most complete teams in football right now. So I'm going to pick the the Vikings. Yeah, I agree. Like they just don't have any holes on defense. Mm -mm. Um, even the cornerback that they drafted was really good. Uh, and that was kind of their only weakness was like the second cornerback spot behind Xavier Rhodes and both corners looked good. Um, I, I don't see, yeah, I don't see them losing for a while. So I'm taking the, the Vikings to get it done in green Bay. So take the Packers or take the Vikings over the Packers. Leads us to the fourth game. Who's the corner that they drafted? Uh, Mike Hughes. Mike Hughes. Okay. Yeah. So it's him and uh, Trey Wayne. Williams. And Trey Wayne. Like yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry. Um, what do we got? Cleveland, New Orleans? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Interesting game, man. The 0 0 and 1 Cleveland Browns versus the 0 1 and 0 New Orleans Saints. 
I'm going to take the Saints. Even though Cleveland played pretty good against the Steelers, who I think are similar to the Saints in that their offense can score a ton of points and their defense is kind of a question mark right now. Uh, but the Steelers' defense looked better. Uh, New Orleans, I don't know. I just feel like – I think they're going to be better than they were against Tampa Bay. I feel I – don't, I don't know if their defense is as bad as it looked yet. So I'm going to give them a, another chance. They're at home. Give me the Saints. Yeah. I try not to come away with too many conclusions after week one. Right. And I think – I don't know. It just could be – I think it's probably going to be an anomaly what happened uh, with the Buccaneers in week one. And the Browns, I I just – I don't see them going into New Orleans and, and getting a win. So um, do you think when, how they back. when the Saints win the Super Bowl, we're going to be like, man, in week one, everybody wrote them off? It's possible. Like, it happens all the time. Like the that second time the, Steel, or the Patriots won, they, yeah, yeah, the Bills – Game they lost thirty one to nothing to start the year. All uh, I know is yeah, when the Chiefs beat the Patriots, the Patriots win the Super Bowl. So you right. never want that to happen. So we'll be rooting for the Patriots against the Chiefs this time. For the maybe the first time. Ever. Yeah. Taking taking the Saints over the Browns. Cool. Miami at the New York Jetropolitans. 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 Yep. God, I want to ride with Team to leave here and pick the the AFC East uh, winner. I didn't pick the Jets last week, like you did, and I regretted it. So give me the Jets. Taking the Jets, I think they're going to come back a little bit to earth, and I think the Dolphins are going to start the year two and zero. Ooh, I I think you're right. Adam Gase's ability to, to game plan for the defense. Let it be known, I think you're actually right here, but I'm going to stick with I'm, it. But you're still picking that. Because we picked Jets. a lot of the same teams, so. Yeah, that's like part. That's partly why I did it. Um, I feel like a lot of these ones are just – they're kind of easy at the yeah. beginning, but who knows. This game's <laughs> tough. Kansas City at Pittsburgh. Sure is. Um, yeah, so Patrick Mahomes had his first four touchdowns last week. Uh, It's been well documented that I fucking hate him and he sucks and I'm never going to root for him, but I think, but I think I'm taking the chiefs here. (laughs) Yeah. Because I I rode with your uh, two of his, his passes were pitches this week Um, Yeah. and uh, chiefs fans. I have never seen them get so fucking worked up in my Twitter. (laughs) That should be our, our goal is to work up. To trigger a bunch of Chiefs fans every and I week. Didn't even, I didn't even say he was bad. I'm just like, you pointed it out to me. I've given you credit <laughs> for pointing it out. But you're, well, I went back and looked, and I was like, fuck, Will's 100% right. One of those pitches was impressive, though, because it, I had to yeah. watch the play like three times to see how he did it. Um, but still, it's still he, like, did, he did <laughs> other things. He made other throws. He played very I well. Agree. I agree. Um, yeah. Whatever. But I'm going to pick the the Steelers because, uh, I don't know. I like, I like, uh, Connor. What's his name? Sean. I want to keep on Sean Connery. No, I want to call him Sean Connor. Wait, is that who was Terminator? Connor, John Connor. I want to call him John. I don't, I don't even know anybody's fucking name. There's Uh, a fullback for the Jets who was named John Connor. Yeah. And they used to call him the Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. It's James Connor. So I like him. I think Kansas yeah. City's defense is their problem. Uh, I think the Steelers will be more effective running the ball against them. Their Steelers are at home, and I think Mahomes is good, but I think he's going to make some mistakes. He's got uh, – Yeah, he's got, it's about time. He's got the other white pass rusher to work, wor- worry about in uh, T.J. Watt instead. Yep. Joey Bosa, who also has a younger brother in college right now, Bosa Jr., tearing it up. Uh, mm-hmm. so some NFL team's gonna gonna have their wet dreams come true when he just seems he just seems like a future Oakland Raider somehow. I have a Bosa weird Jr. It's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah, he has John Gruden all over him. Oh yes, oh yeah. That's if John Gruden can create a player in a laboratory. It would come out like Nick Bosa, and it would have right. the same exact uh, 
political <laughs> political beliefs as Nick Bosa too. Is he like a, a a big Trump supporter or something? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's got some. He's got some tweets out there uh, that are <laughs> worth looking at. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that next week or. Uh, <laughs> that'll be a big. Uh, that will definitely get talked about uh, when the draft is coming up. And uh, that's a long ways away. So I've got Kansas City. You've got Pittsburgh. Uh, Kareem Hunt didn't have a very good game against. Oh, well, that's true. Chargers, even though they're up for most of the game, so you'd think that they'd be running the ball a lot. But I don't know. Do you think he bounces back against the the Steelers, or is he kind of going to end up being a one year wonder? I don't think he's a one year wonder. Um, I think he'll play decent, but I think Connor's going to outplay him. Yeah, I mean James Connor is kind of making Le'Veon Bell's situation not so good anymore. He's kind of losing leverage the better James Conner plays. No, it's working for the Steelers. Yep. All right, let's probably... burn through the rest of these bitches. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Philadelphia Eagles 1-0 at the 1-0 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Foles, Fitzpatrick. Who's your pick? Love it. Uh, great test for the Eagles after what we saw happen week one. I'm going to take the Eagles on the road. Uh, I picked against them last week. It was a mistake. Tampa Bay lost Vernon Hargraves, their corner. Yep. Uh, I think he's on IR. Uh, Grimes had a groin thing. So I feel like Philadelphia will have more success. And Tampa Bay's offense is not going to do to the Eagles what they did to the Saints. I agree. Um, I want Ryan Fitzpatrick really, really badly to be. I do too. Like 04 Peyton Manning or at the very least like. 1991 Mark Rippon. How cool would it be if, if Fitzpatrick <laughs> broke the touchdown record? That would be – that would be so good. That would be the only player who I'd, I'd be happy uh, to see him break Take Peyton. away from Manning. 2013 record. Yeah. I don't think it's ever going to be Brady. It might as well be Fitzpatrick. We're on yeah. the Fitzpatrick um, touchdown yeah. record bandwagon right now. Yeah. Well, when it happens at the end of the year, give us credit, please. We're the ones who called it. Uh, all that being said, <laughs> I'm taking the Eagles. <laughs> and I think he's uh, so less than three touchdowns. Yeah, probably. Okay, Houston at Tennessee. Uh, these teams are both 0-1, but it's a divisional matchup. Uh, these teams, I have no idea how good either of them are, really. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, haven't, I didn't watch anything about that Titans game. I don't know who they are at all. I think Houston – well, they both have decent defenses. I'm going to go Houston. I don't know. I feel like Deshaun Watson – I don't yeah. know if he's a great quarterback, but I feel like he's going to play good this week maybe. I'm taking the Texans as well. And Although, a lot of it has to do with Mariota. And I don't think he's – I don't know if they've cleared him to play yet, but even if he's playing, don't think he's going to be as mobile as usual, and that's a tough thing to – to not be able to move very well when you've got Jadavian Clowney, Whitney Merciless, and J.J. Watt playing on the other side. So I, I thought about taking the Titans, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up going with the Texans. I think they get their first win. And Mike Vrabel starts 0-2 in his career. A couple go. of uh, former Patriots making some, some, bad, some bad starts to their coaching careers. Okay. Right. India at Washington. Ooh. Washington looked a lot better than I thought they were going they to. They did. They did. I don't want to pick Washington, so I'm going to pick Indianapolis. I think Andrew Luck finishes off the game this time. Yeah. Um, I picked Indy last week, too, and I thought that they were going to come back and win it. So I might as, just well, I might as well just pick Indy until they win. Do it. Don't pick Washington. Um, yeah. I'm taking the Colts. Okay, then we got Arizona at Los Angeles Rams. Easy pick for me, Rams. Rams yeah. Arizona looked yeah. bad. Looks Rams. bad. This looks like uh, a rebuilding year for yeah. the Cardinals. Do you think we'll see Josh Rosen? Not this week. I wouldn't put him in against the fucking Rams. I wouldn't either. But then again, you've got some some players on that defensive line that could very well – Break Sam Bradford. Break Sam yeah. Bradford's leg into a trillion pieces, so – I'm taking if, the Rams either way. Yeah, only way he goes in if uh, Bradford gets hurt. Detroit at San Francisco. Redemption game for both of these teams. I'm taking 
Jimmy Garoppolo. This is the battle of the two fantasy quarterbacks I have, Garoppolo and Stafford. Who are you going to start? I'm going to start fucking Garoppolo. So I guess that means you think, uh, yeah, San Give Francisco. Give me 49ers at home. All right, I like it. I think Ooh. Matt Patricia is not a good coach. I think he's going to start on too. Here is the game of the week, in my opinion. Patriots at Jaguars. Yes. Uh, this Patriots one. won. They beat Houston, but not. it wasn't like a, a blowout win. Um, no. They were better than Houston all around, but it – Houston also fucked up. Like, the first play, they yeah, fumbled the exchange. Fumbles in the – giving Patriots seven points. Yeah. I, don't, I think – Rob Gronkowski pass, it should have been incomplete. Yeah, I think the Jags get a, a win here. They're at home. They have the playoff loss they're trying to redeem themselves from. Uh, look, you, I'm going to take the Jags just because fuck the Patriots. As much as I want to take the Jags, I'm going to take the Patriots. I'm going to take the Patriots. Idiot. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm Here. wrong. I'll just, I'll just say that. The Jags win by a touchdown. That's how confident I am. Ooh. Oh, boy. I mean, the Patriots, they always lose a game at the beginning of the season, so you could very well be right, and I hope you are. Yeah, that's, but, the, that's, that's really my reasoning is the best time to pick a Patriots loss is within the first three weeks really? of the season. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, yeah. Benny Fowler signed with the, the Patriots. and uh, really? And Corey Coleman? Yeah, maybe they cut yeah. Benny Fowler after they signed Corey Coleman, but Fowler did sign there. I, if he's still on the team, my prediction is he catches Tom Brady's last pass ever. Ever? Wow. Just like just, he did with oh, Peyton just Manning. Like Manning. Oh, yep. okay. And this might be uh, Tom Brady's last game he ever plays in, TBH. Some bold predictions. I like it. Uh, yeah. I don't not hope that happens. Uh, never wish for another man to get injured. However, I'm not wishing for it. Be clear. <laughs> just, I'm not wishing for that at all, Will. I'm just saying. I think this might be the last game he ever plays, and it could be for many different reasons. Uh, Giants, Cowboys. <laughs> I want to know those reasons, but let's get Giants. Yeah, okay, this game, Cowboys. This game sucks. I hate this game annually. Every year we get the Giants at the Cowboys. Even if it was like Cowboys at Giants, it would be not as bad. There's something about this game. With Al Michaels and those NBC cameras and the stupid fucking Jerry Dome with the weird fluorescent lights. I hate it. Uh, I want them both to lose. However, someone has to win, and I think it's going to be the Cowboys. Okay, I'll take the Giants. I think the Giants are a better team. You might be right. Um, I won't be surprised if Dallas wins. Yeah, I just think the Giants had a chance to win last week, and – I don't think they're that good of a team either. But if you get handed those chances at home, week one, you got to take them. They're going to take them this week. Okay, Will? Just chill. We'll see. We'll see. (laughs) Seahawks at Bears Monday Night Football. Give me the Bears. Speaking of teams that had chances to win, taking the Bears as well. I don't think the Seahawks are very good. We saw that last week. Brandon's trying to say something for people who are listening. This is good radio. I'm taking the Bears. Bears win. That finishes it off. Those are our predictions. And yep. now we get to do our worst fantasy lineup. Oh, baby. So the moment you've all been waiting for. We did this through FanDuel. We're not sponsored by FanDuel yet. Unless they want to. Uh, we each built a fantasy team. Sorry, I'm yep. trying to pull up my guys. Same. There we go. And, okay, so – In FanDuel, you get a budget, which is $60,000 that you have to spend on your fantasy team for your daily fantasy lineup. Correct. Uh, The rules are, Will and I each had to spend at least $55,000 of our sixty. dollars We could start one player who has a questionable status uh, for injury purposes. And those are basically the only two rules. So real quickly, uh, we'll put up the lineups. I'm going to put it up for YouTube. But will uh, give me your lineup. Okay, you want to go? So like, everybody knows we've got quarterback, two running backs, three receivers, a tight end, a flex position, and defense. Yeah, you want to go position by position and switch off, or just my whole team right now? 
Uh, let's go back and forth. Position okay. by position, but we'll just do it quickly. We don't have to give reasons. Right. We're just going to say why. We're just going to show. Yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah, this is kind of a big reason I didn't pick the Jaguars, but I've got Blake Bortles starting at quarterback against the Patriots. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Will Six, and I, yeah. we don't know who the other person has selected. So right. this yeah, is, this is we're new. hearing it live too. Okay, you got $6, Bortles. Salary. Yeah, Bortles against uh, the Patriots. Yep. I've got Josh Allen against the Chargers. Josh Allen was my pick, but I just wanted to blow some I thought salary. we both might pick the same quarterback. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just – Running uh, back. First running back. Okay. I've got a guy who played – who didn't really do anything, I guess, against the Broncos last week, Rashad Penny for uh, 5,800. Good pick. I picked Christian McCaffrey against Atlanta. Okay. He had a That's fumble last week. Uh, He's gonna fumble again. <laughs> I needed I needed a, a high value player too. So I don't know. I heard CJ's like questionable. Well, we'll see. So, I could be dead wrong. You might end up with the most points. <laughs> Running back two. I've got a guy who I've never heard of, and that's why I picked him. Naheem Hines from the Colts. Oh wow! <laughs> Fifty five hundred dollars. Wow. Naheem Hines. If I knew who he was. Uh, I'd tell you something about him, but I sure don't. <laughs> I went with Marshawn Lynch from the Raiders. Okay. Questionable with an illness. Ooh, what kind I think of he'll illness? play. There's a lot of illnesses listed, which is weird. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. But I don't think he's going to have a good game against the Broncos. And I needed something to root for during the Broncos game. Yeah. I mean, he could have anything. He could have shingles. He could you'd have cholera. he could have hay fever. I don't Okay. Could have car sickness. Anything. We'll see. Who's your first right, receiver? Uh, yeah, speaking of the Raiders, I've got Amari Cooper. Uh, I think he had six yards against the Rams. Smart. Anyway, I saw a stat that said in six of his last 13 games, Amari Cooper has had 10 or fewer receiving yards. In six of his last 13 games. Okay. That I, sucks. Uh, <laughs> that's terrible. I went the opposite <laughs> route, and I picked one of the best receivers in the league, and Mike Evans <laughs> – Oh, okay. <laughs> Going against the Eagles, though. Yeah. Mike Evans was my highest paid player, uh, and uh, I needed it. So I went with Mike Evans. Okay. Well, pick him to have a bad game. All right. How, wide receiver. Yeah, how go much ahead. did you spend total? What was your remaining? Oh, I, I spent 55000 exactly. Okay. I, uh, I spent 55100 Okay. So just about the same. All right. Um, I've got. Kelvin Benjamin at wide receiver, too. Good call. And it's mostly because of Josh Allen and that offensive line. And he might get sacked more than he actually throws the ball in this game. So, okay. I don't think Kelvin Benjamin's going to have enough time to, to get down the field for anything big. Okay. Then I went with Larry Fitzgerald against the Rams. Uh, another yeah. risky pick, but the Rams uh, did – with your Amari Cooper pick, their defense did not give up shit to wide receivers. So that's why I'm going with Fitz. Okay, I've got for wide receiver three, I've got Josh Gordon. And my rationale is I think he's going to be a boomer bust kind of player. So he only had one catch against the Steelers, and it was the touchdown that tied up the game. Uh, but that kind of, I don't know, like just seeing that, like they only got the ball to him and like with that much time left in the fourth quarter. He's clearly not that big of a part of the offense yet. Like, he still missed all of training camp just about. Okay. Um, Fair enough. I don't think he's going to do a lot against the Saints. Who've gotcha. I still think I have a pretty solid I second. said quickly, Will. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, right. My next wide receiver, Terrence Williams of the Cowboys. Okay. Always safe bet to not perform. Correct. Tight end. Um, Okay, so another guy who I've never heard of, Anthony Ferkser for the Tennessee Titans. I, exactly. Well, I guess Delaney Walker got hurt, so technically he's a guy who will start uh, playing I a guess. little bit outside of the rules here. But I went with the tight end Charles Clay for the Bills. Charles Clay. Wait, how am I outside of the rules? Taking guys who might not even fucking play it down. That's how the outside the rules is. <laughs> I got to the salary cap, did I not? The you salary did, point? but that's what matters. Apparently, he is going to play because okay, he was we'll see. fairly high. Who's your flex player? 
All right, I've got tight end Ricky Seals Jones for the Arizona Cardinals, fifty-two hundred dollars. All right, I went with Philip Dorsett from New England against Jacksonville. Okay. Um, All right, defense. I went with the Packers against Vikings. Good call. I've got the Steelers going up against the Chiefs. Okay, also good call, maybe. All Did right, we- and there's. Our lineups, I think Will did a better job at picking uh, shittier players. I'll have to look into a couple of these no-namers. He, uh, yeah. Maybe that will be the third rule, is you can pick one player like you really don't know who the hell he is. Watch Naheem Hines go off for 200 yards. Yeah, exactly. This week. Um, so this will be fun. I'm excited to see which one of us yeah. did shittier, and uh, we'll show you the results next week, and then we'll pick another lineup to try to be terrible fantasy football players. Yeah, guess what, Brandon? You're going to kick my ass this week. That means I'm yeah, going to win. I, my, <laughs> I took some risks. Uh, you sure did. I, I, I picked matchups quite a bit, and yeah. that might bite me in the ass. I um, think you're going to blow me out. So that concludes the podcast. We got the Broncos beating the Raiders. A lot of picks here. Terrible fantasy stuff. Uh, let us know if we're doing a good job or a bad job. Yes. And we love you and goodbye.